Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. This is Tableau Major Donor Characteristics. The presenters for the webinar today are going to be myself, Glenn Kendall, and also the one creating everything behind the scenes. Well, not behind the scenes. Front and center, Holly Kendall. Hi, everybody. Your attendee control panel for GoToWebinar is a big, unwieldy thing. So you'll want to take the section there below the wombat that's for questions and pop that out so that you can ask questions during the webinar. And we'll be keeping an eye on that and answering questions as we go along here. And then hit the red arrow at the top to collapse the control panel so that you can see more of the screen. And wombat fact of the week. Wombats yes. have the largest brain of any marsupial, making them the most intelligent of the marsupials. Wow. So yeah. they're right up there with koalas then. It's a, a bit higher <laughs> than the koala. Actually, I think the koala is the exact opposite. Yeah, they have the smallest brain to body size of yeah. any animal. Any animal. They're, they're not the brightest. Wombats are fun. We're going to have another fun wombat fact next week. So keep that in mind. You can uh, bring that up at the dinner table. Fun Wombat fact. Today we're going to be using Tableau Desktop 10.3, which is the latest version. Also Tableau Server 10.3. We will be using a data source that we built called Constituents. This is something that is automatically available if you have Tableau with us. We build this data source based on your Razor's Edge data, and it looks a lot like, because it's based on Razor's Edge query. And if you don't have a Tableau with us, you can still kind of recognize what these different fields are, and you are able to then do an RE export yourself and be able to recreate this exact same visualization. Exactly, yeah. So you'll want to keep an eye on the the data fields that we're using, uh, is not too terribly many of them. We'll make some calculated fields as well and uh, export and build it, build it that way. So in order to look at major donor characteristics, the main sort of inflection point or tipping point that we're going to be focusing on is that first major gift. So when was it and, and what was the amount? that caused, that made this person shift in the database from being perhaps just a donor or maybe not even in the database to being a major donor. So we're going to start out with, in Tableau, creating a parameter whereby your user can adjust what the threshold is in the visualizations we'll be making. So maybe your major gift threshold is $1,000, maybe it's $5,000, maybe it's $10,000. Maybe you just want to be able to adjust those on the fly to look at how the viz changes based on what your major gift threshold is, OK? Uh, the next thing we're going to be doing is looking at that first major gift amount. So when that took place and how much it was, we're going to be using a level of detail calculation in order to do that. Uh, it's a bit more of an advanced Tableau feature, but one that you'll need to become familiar with and master if you're going to be doing GIF data in Tableau. And then finally, we'll be looking at age. Age is a characteristic. But one of the mistakes we see people make is that they'll look at, you know, do some analysis based on the age of the constituent. But what we actually want to see is what their age was at the time they made that first major gift. So if you're looking back historically across time, someone may have made that first major gift 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. But if you're looking at their current age, that actually doesn't tell you, as, you know, what you're, what you're trying to find out, which was, you know, how old they were at the time they made that major gift because you're trying to find out characteristics for people in the future that have similar characteristics, right? So 
So it's important to, to figure that part out. All right, enough of me yapping. Let's uh, start building. All right, so let's just go and show desktop here and open up Tableau 10.3 for us. So what is the first thing that we need to do? Give me data. Right, since we're using Tableau Server 10.3, we're going to go under Connect and just go and hit Tableau Server. Since so we're already logged into our sample data site, we're just going to go ahead and select Constituents and go right over to our sheet, start building. And so before we get too involved, uh, I would like to gauge the level of Tableau experience of you, the audience, that way we can adjust our explanations and speed of, kind of how we're going to go through this. Yeah, so uh, if you're multitasking, if you're, if you're on uh, Facebook right now, if you're also reading your email, uh, stop doing that for a second and, <laughs> and go to the questions section here in GoToWebinar and let us know what your experience is with Tableau. Are you new to Tableau? You've been using Tableau for six months. You've been using it for a year. You've been using it for five years, 10 years, whatever. Let us know what your experience level is. So that way we can get a sense of how, you know, how deep to go when we're talking about things. So one person is 10 months. A couple people are new. Another person is about a year. Another person says no experience. Uh, another person also new, less than three months, new, new. So it sounds like a lot of the people on the webinar today are, are relatively new to Tableau. Okay, then. So then in that case, we're going to maybe do a brief overview of kind of how Tableau sorts the data and just get a sense of what we're actually looking at. Sounds good. Here. Okay. So. Very quick overview. When you connect to data in Tableau and go to this building page, uh, Tableau will sort your data based on kind of four different categories. Uh, the first thing we're looking at is, is it a dimension or is it a measure? So you can think of a dimension, which is organized up here at the top, as categories of things. If I were to open up some of these little tables here, you can see, okay, Date added, birth date, birth place, added by, income, industry. These are all methods of organization, ways to categorize the data. And if we look down here in the measures, we can see, okay, we got age, fiscal year starts, max match goal, number of employees, system record ID. These are all numbers, things that fill in the categories up here in the dimensions. And then the other category is the color sorting. So you notice that when I'm mousing over things, here in the measures, for the most part, they're green. And here in the dimensions, if I open up one of these, they are blue for the most part. Uh, blue and green just mean uh, it is a discrete, in the case of blue, or continuous, in the case of green, value. Uh, about 90% of the time, you're going to have dimensions will be blue and measures will be green. But you can actually see here, we have one that is a discrete measure. And there will be uh, a moment later in the webinar where we will have to make a uh, continuous dimension. So you can kind of see when those exceptions come up and how you would use them. Yeah, so don't. Stress out too much about dimensions and measures. Just know dimensions, uh, like Holly said, are categories of things, and measures are uh, totaling up things. You're, you're, you know, it's numbers that you're that you're measuring. All right. So the first thing we want to do for this visualization is we need to set a parameter, like was mentioned earlier. So we're going to go up to this little arrow here and go create parameter and we can name the parameter we call this major gift threshold all right 
So we want this to be an integer because we need to set in some kind of number value for the major gift. Then we want the format to be a range. So minimum of, we're just going to say 1,000 for the purposes of the webinar. Uh, in this case, when you're creating the parameter, the minimum would just be whatever threshold you want major gifts to be counted as. So it could be 5,000, it could be 10,000, whatever the user wants to put in. And we're going to change the display format to currency, because we are dealing with money here, but we don't need decimal places. Do we want to do a step size? Say so you can only have you know, in increments of 10 or 1,000 or That's something like that. probably a good idea. Would you think we should do the increments 1,000? Sure. Do 1,000. Yeah, so you should do that, and someone's going to say, but I want 2,500. That's fine. That's fine. All right. Just according to your needs. Mm -hmm. So you can see that the parameter has appeared down here at the bottom, but there's actually no way to see it in the visualization. So you just go and say show parameter control, and it'll pop up over here. Right, so this is the part where you want to be sure to collapse your GoToWebinar control panel so you can see that part of the screen. Major gift threshold. So then what this will do, again, after you make a workbook and publish it, because you the users will be able to enter a value in there that they want. So you can default to a certain value, like $1,000, but then you can let the user type in whatever they want and the biz will change accordingly. So. Very good. All right, so those calculated fields mentioned earlier, I think it's, since the visualization is going to be reliant upon these various calculations, we're going to go ahead and create them now. So similar to creating the parameter, we're going to go up and hit Create Calculated Field. So the first one is going to be First Major Gift Amount. And just for the sake of time, we have made a cheat sheet that will be sent to everyone in the webinar follow-up. And we're just going to copy and paste this over. All right, so what does this calculation say? Well, what are we looking at? So the first part is record ID, so the record ID of the constituent. If their minimum gift amount is greater than or equal to the threshold that is set over here, then Show the gift amount. All right. Does that one make sense? Is that pretty straightforward? All righty. So first major gift amount. You can see that that appears right down here in the measures. And there's a little equal sign here that shows that this was a calculated field. This wasn't initially part of the data. All right. Now we need to make another calculated field. We're going to be making three calculations in total. So if we have gift amounts, well, we need to see when that gift came in. So we need to say first major gift date. And similar to before, we will do cheat sheet. All right. So pretty similar to the earlier calculations. The record ID, if the gift amount is greater than or equal to the threshold that is set, then display the date of the gift in terms of fiscal year. Fiscal year, this gift date fiscal year is another calculated field we've created. Um, you can just use gift date. All we've done is we've created a calculated field for that, and then we just configure it to show what the fiscal year is. So. If you have Tableau with us, we automatically figure out what your fiscal year is based on your data, and just that just happens automatically for you. Um, or you can go in later and, and change that. So, um, so this is the level of detail calculation. So when it has that first uh, parameter, that first uh, keyword in there fixed, that means we're going to do a level of detail. So it's basically going through all the records one at a time because because you know for each record there's going to be multiple gifts so it's saying 
find that gift amount amongst all the records or amongst all the gifts rather that that person has and then you know it'll do that across all the records as well so this is what a level of detail calculation looks like All right, and then for our last calculated field, we are going to be looking at age. We want to see how old the constituent was when they gave their first major gift. So we'll call this age at time of first major gift. All right, and this will be the last time we have to break out the cheat sheet. So this one is a little bit different and the ones we were looking at before. So the birth date as stored in Razor's Edge, as you may know, is a string. It is not actually a date. So it is in this format, year as a four digit year, and mm -hmm. then two digit month, two digit day. So there's a function in Tableau called date parse, which basically says, take that and turn it into, take the string and turn it into a date. So we're telling it, this is the format of the date. Take that birth date and turn it into an actual date. And then we're finding the difference now. So the date diff, so in terms of years, what's the difference in years between the birth date of the person in Razor's Edge and the date they first gave that major gift, which again was just that calculated field we just made. So kind of building on calculated fields right here. Um, so. This is great. This is actually terribly useful and hopefully right there with this calculated field, it's worth at least the price of admission for today's webinar. <laughs> All right. All right. So I think that's enough building calculations and parameters. We can actually start visualizing some of our data here. All right. So first thing we want to do is just get a sense of who is who is giving us major gifts? Okay. So. How many wombats? How many wombats are giving us gifts? Okay. But I'm gonna say specifically for now, what is the, the gender of the wombats that are giving <laughs> us these gifts? And since now we see that okay, female, male, unknown, unknown could probably be some kind of corporation. Right. Giving or gifts. Just, or just bad data. Whichever way, well. since we're using a uh, sample data. Yeah, this is Razor's Edge sample data, by the way. So um, it's not going to be horribly interesting in terms of of the possible, you know, insights that we'll get. Uh, we've added a, some extra data in there as well to try to make it a little more realistic. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Okay. So all I'm going to do is I just drag gender over to filters so we can remove unknown. So unknown has disappeared. That is good. So then we want to get that first major gift amount and see, all right, what is the gift amount? So this is one where Tableau by default has given us some. I think clearly a first major gift would not be in the 320 to 280 thousand dollars, but it could be, yeah. but maybe not for the average person. So we want to change this instead of sum of first major gift is to average. Okay. So now this is giving us a better sense. 5,600 and about 43-ish hundred. Right. But notice now that we change this from sum to average, we have lost our dollar value. Oh, probably have to change yeah. the... Uh, so one thing I'm first going to do is we're just going to hit swap. So this is a little bit easier to visualize. I think if we the, just... Uh, I think it's on the properties. Oh, that's the, right. On the uh, calculated field. So when you make a field, you have to tell Tableau, like, what kind of data is this? So in this case, we're going to first major gift amount. We're going to default properties, and we want to go to number format. Yeah, see, it's just doing automatic. We want to specify this will always be currency. And we're saying currency custom rather than standard because we don't want decimal places. No need for decimal places when we're dealing with numbers this large. Yeah. yeah. 
a thousand dollars and twelve cents. All right, and then we also want to see, also get some more color in here. So we're going to take then this gift amount, level of detail, the other level of detail calculation we had talked about, and we're going to bring this over to color. But remember, we need to keep this consistent. Since we're looking at average up here in the rows, we also want to be looking at average here. Yeah, you don't have to, but I think it might might make more sense to your users. So, so yeah, go ahead and select that, and then um, we have a fun comment here that someone has had people walk in with stacks of quarters. Stacks of quarters. Stacks of quarters. Excuse me for their donation. Wow, that's uh, that's pretty amazing. That's a dedicated donor right there. They walk in with a with a stack of quarters. All right, so I'm just going to change the color. I thought it'd be fun since we're dealing with money here. Maybe we can keep it green. So it just helps this stand out a bit more. I wonder if in the future they're going to walk in with a sack of Bitcoin. How would you carry Bitcoin in a, in a sack? I don't know. Added all these values. You can see that when we mouse over, there's a little tool tip that pops up. So what we're looking at here is it says average gift amount level of detail and then average first major gift amount. So average first major gift amount, this makes sense. On average, their first major gift for women was roughly 5,600. But average gift amount level of detail is kind of a confusing statement. Uh, I think this more equates to average lifetime giving. Right, because the gift amount is the total amount that they've given, you know, all the sacks of quarters they've ever brought in. So, mm -hmm. so then yeah. in this case, we're going to rename this, make this less confusing for the end user here. So instead of average gift amount, we'll say average lifetime giving. And probably don't need to actually say the word gender. I think, I think that will be self-explanatory by nature of tool tipping over. Yep. Okay. So you can do average, you can do median. Just know if you do average, things may be skewed a bit. If you have one gift that's a lot bigger than the others, uh, median is something you can do. If you're using a data extract, which is what we have here, where basically all the data is together and, and Tableau can look at it all and, and do an analysis of it all at once. Um, so we could switch that to median instead. So that's something you might want to play with. We'll just leave it as average for now, but just know, you know, median may be actually more of what you want to look at. So, okay. So we see the ladies are definitely um, not only giving more, the first average gift, uh, first major gift average, but also lifetime, they're also giving more. Cool. All right, and so what do we need to look at next? Um, maybe constituency. That would be good. So maybe let's name this sheet first and then make that, a new sheet. That sounds like a good idea. So we'll call this gender. And we'll go make a new sheet. And okay, then we know men or women who's on average giving more money. So maybe we want to look at then what you know type of constituent is giving us money. So we're going to be doing roughly the same thing, but instead of gender, we're going to be dragging constituency description. You can either drag it onto the rows or you can double click. Either one is fine. So similar as before, we have some nulls in here, since I don't want any nulls, you can either drag constituency to filters and you can uncheck null. By doing this, it's kind of a, you are able to apply it to the entire worksheet or to the entire data source should you want. That's one way to do it. The other way is I could just right click on null and hit exclude. It makes the filter for you. So Bam. it makes the filter for you. Either way is fine, just kind of depends on 
what you want to do. All right, so we have constituency description. Now we also want first major gift amount. So I drag this up here. It's going to give us bars again. So I think we should probably sort this before we start changing we'll change it. I'll, some, I'll change, change some to average. Yeah, so we're consistent in what we're doing. That's okay. good. But I also want to see, you know, maybe this in descending amounts. I think that might be a bit easier to see. So that did descending based on, on the name, so like yeah. alphabetically. That is true. Probably don't want to do it that way. Well, you could. Well, I mean, maybe do it based on the the data, so the big bars. Probably a good uh, idea here. Down. There you go. Oh, that's true. We want to sort by and sending. Then we can pick the field. All right. And Tableau. Already knew what we wanted. Yeah. Wow. It's like AI. It knows. Mm -hmm. It's reading your mind. Right, so this is just sorting it by first major gift amount. And we can see down here that technology and honor slash in memorial is nothing. Right. Uh, cool. Right. Uh, I think we also want to then add some color to this as well and look at the gift amount level of detail as before. Because right now we can see that, all right, they did give a first major gift and you can see the volunteer and friend gave us a first large major gift but we want to see if that continued to remain with those two in front as we change these so now we can see that volunteer had the largest first major gift amount and if we look at friend in comparison to volunteer we can see that volunteer has also had the largest gift amount over to time right the lifetime lifetime giving yeah and then down with the darker colors you can see the board members they maybe not give a large amount for their first major gift but over the lifetime they're uh they're giving a lot cool so similar to before i'm just going to go change this tool tip so that way it's easy for the end user to understand what they're looking at average lifetime giving and i also think we don't need to say constituency description i think as another one or it will be apparent what we can do instead is highlight this and make it a little bit bigger spaces yeah yeah i'll, I'll bring it doesn't matter I'll, I'll get rid of the spaces so it's left justified i think it looks better this way there you go about color should we make that one green or have some green, some blue. I think consistency is definitely something we want to have. So in this case, I'm going to do stepped color. Uh, I like doing even numbers because I think five different steps might be a little much for what we're looking at. And step color just helps to really differentiate kind of who is at the top and who is closer to the, the bottom. Right. I mean, this is a cool thing, and this is the power of data visualization, is that you're really looking at two things at once here. You're looking at the bar length, so that's the average of the first major gift amount, and then you're looking at the color, which is the average of the total amount given. So I'm going to go rename this. All right. So next we want to look at maybe where these constituents are coming from. Because we have the gender of the constituents, the type of the constituents, but we don't know where these constituents are located. So Tableau also has some great mapping capabilities. It's actually probably one of my favorite features in Tableau. So latitude and longitude are automatically generated. I already know where all the gifts are going to be. Where? Where do wombats live? Australia. Yeah, I bet all the gifts are from Australia. Well, we can check that. So by generating latitude and longitude, Tableau gives us a map of the world. So what we want to do next, 
go up to preferred address and we will bring over country so we can see who has actually given us money and we can see that it is the United States and Canada that's it likely story mm -hmm. then I'm also going to give a state as well to see that what state or province within Canada or US I'm going to change this to movement tool so we're just focusing on continental United States. If I zoom out, we can probably get, yeah, there's Hawaii, Alaska, Puerto Rico down there. So since looking at dots is not particularly helpful information, we're going to change this from circle to filled map. Nice. All right. So, if we're looking at a filled map, what do we need to fill it with? Uh, well, before we did major gift amount, but then the color range was based on the lifetime giving. Mm -hmm. So, we want to keep this consistent. So, we are looking at lifetime giving within each of these different states or provinces. So, we're taking gift amount level of detail over to color and keeping color consistent as well. We're gonna change this to green, and I'll keep it stepped in this case. And hit apply and see if we like how that looks. That looks good, but we're looking at some. Average. We want to change this to average. Okay. And we can see that very Whoa, much changed what, what we were looking at. Newfoundland. Just so happens I have a Newfie connection. Yeah. Newfie Heritage back in there somewhere. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the data point. It's just a random coincidence. I'm sure. So, all right, we're looking at average lifetime giving. I think I also want to see in the tooltip, though, the first gift amount. Right. So instead of having to drag this onto color or size or label, I'm just dragging this tooltip. So it'll only appear in the tooltip. Change this from sum to average again. And making sure that this says average lifetime giving. And I think country is self-explanatory. At least I would hope that that would be self-explanatory. And similar to constituency description, I'm just going to make state big. So I think that will also be pretty self-explanatory. All right, so we can see in this case of the major gift from Newfoundland, they gave one incredibly large gift yeah. of $100,000 and then never gave money again. How many wombats can you feed that? Probably a zoo's worth. <laughs> Right, so we can see behind this outlier, so this is a case where a median might come in handy. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it'd make a difference in this case because it's broken down yeah. by state. So if it is just one gift, it won't matter. It is true, but now we know that there is this one time $100,000 gift floating right. around within constituency. Yeah, we're the volunteer. Hmm. Or were they that no value <laughs> yeah. that we excluded earlier? All right. All right, so does this make sense, everything that we've been doing? Anyone have any questions? So I write out location. Timid crowd. All right, so then the last thing we want to do is see age, right? Not just age. Age when they gave that first major gift, mm -hmm. right? Since we've been talking about that calculated field, right? So long, we want to put that in. All right, so let's see what happens when we just add age now. So it, it's a measure, so it made it it made it into a number, so it wants to sum it. It made it into a measure rather, so it wants to sum it. So we're trying to look at distinct ages here. So what happens if we change this maybe into an attribute? See how that looks first. Yeah, I don't it, know if it's going to be any better. 
Nope. It kind of did not like that at all. So we're going to hit undo. This is one of these cases where we're actually going to need to change this measure into a dimension. Hit back once more. No, no, we're, we're going to change it here. All right. We're going to go change it to a dimension so we wow. can see by changing it here what is happening. That's crazy. So what we've done here is it's still continuous, it's still green, but we've changed it to dimension. And continuous since, dimension. Continuous dimension. And since this is sample data, we have a null value here. A couple ways you can resolve the null value, my favorite, is to just hit hide indicator. So how can someone have negative age? They were negative 14 at the time of their first major gift. Maybe someone made a gift it's their name 14 years before they were born. That sounds like that's bad data. Could be bad data. So we're going to hit exclude. Yeah. Sorry, your gift just got excluded because your data was bad. Yeah. And since this is still sample data, we have some very weird age spreads. The 88-year-old. Uh, well, that would be a planned interest. gift. They said, when I die, you get my estate. And that's all true. my wombat paraphernalia. Okay, so what should we throw on the other axes? Well, to keep it consistent, we probably need to look at the major gift amount. So if we have first major age at first major gift, it makes sense then to show what that first major gift was. Remember, on average, because we are keeping this consistent. And maybe change this from lines. This is a little confusing to look at. I'm going to change this to circles. Ooh, that looks fun. A little bit easier to see, and same as before, we also want to look at lifetime giving. So we're going to drop that onto color, and we're going to change this in the tooltip for one last time. First, before I change it, we should probably make this into average rather than sum. That way I don't have to write out the word average. Okay, average lifetime giving. Right, and same as before, we want to keep this color consistent. We will keep it in green, four step colors. So one thing I'm noticing is that it's a little hard to, there's a little bit of circle overlap down here. It's not terrible, uh, but I think they are a little hard to see, so we can make these a bit bigger. But when we make it bigger, there'll be more overlap. That's okay. So what we, we want to do, overlap. I think it's okay to have overlap, but what I want to do is add a border to these circles, so that way it's very clear where one circle ends and another circle begins. We'll put an outline around them. Yes, thank you for that helpful tip, person from the audience, put an outline around it. All right, for bonus points, I'm going to ask you, this question, audience, are you are you paying attention? Why do the circles overlap? What is it about something in this viz that's making them overlap? Our bars didn't overlap on the previous ones. Why is there overlap? Anyone? Anyone? It's going once, going twice. It's because we changed that to continuous. If we'd made it discrete, there wouldn't be overlap because it could either be this or this or this or this. But when we make it continuous, it's continuous. Mm -hmm. It could be somewhere in between. Now, why did we make it continuous? Why did we keep it continuous rather than changing it to discrete? Um, well, it'll fit into this kind of graph better. So we would have to change the kind of visualization, the way we visualize the data. We'd have to turn it into probably another bar chart or something similar. Yeah. So just to mix things up a bit and have a different way to look at things. It's also one that, that even if there's some overlap, you can easily still do the mouse over tool tip to see what the exact age is. Right. All right. What's that outlier there on the right? This one? Yeah. Some 55-year-old gave 40. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the, so 55-year-olds are the winners. The average lifetime giving 
uh, and the average first major gift amount, again, this is the age at the time of their first major gift, 55-year-olds. Win for first major gift. But I think in terms of lifetime giving, there would be the darker color. It's the 83, 82-year-old. Yeah, so that might be. Might be our mysterious Newfoundland donor. Wombat lovers. Because mm -hmm. yeah. we see average first major gift amount is 3000 but then lifetime giving is 100000 True. So it's not just planned gifts in there. Mm -hmm. But this is sample data. True. So probably not best to look too hard into it. All right. So this sheet needs a name. Uh, J. We will call it age. Okay. All right. So now we need to put... We have four great worksheets here. Yeah. That would be the best way to look at all of these together at once. We need to put all of these worksheets into a dashboard. So Tableau's dashboard interface is kind of a drag and drop on a grid type situation. So probably the first thing we would need to be looking at is either location or constituency. So I'm just going to drag location down. So okay, I have that down. I'm going to be getting rid of some of these filters here. I don't think that they're. Well, that one's just a. Super, not filter, excuse me. Yeah, color legend. Here, I'm going to get rid of this indicator. And in the case of this one, we're going to zoom in and maybe just center on continental United States. Something like that. Just as long as Newfoundland's still in the picture a little bit. All right. Still there. So we're going to take constituency and drop that on top of it, since these are the two visualizations that need the most real estate. That one you got a scroll bar, though. That is true. So since this has a scroll bar, it might be better then to take this and maybe put it over here onto the side. Making your user scroll is not particularly you know, good dashboard design. All right, make this just a little bit bigger. And this one will then have to be scooted down. So we'll, we'll get to fixing that one. So next we want to take age. And we're going to drop age up here. And getting rid of the legend, we'll also drop gender down next to it. And we're going to get rid of this one. But major gift threshold is one we definitely want to keep. But instead of locking it in in this grid format that we're doing with the other visualizations, I'm going to make it floating. That way we can just carry it around wherever it needs to go. For now, we're going to drop it here. All right, so it's a, it's a little squished right now. So we're going to try to make some of these fit in a bit better. Within dashboards, it's pretty helpful to hide the title in a lot of these separate sheets because it's not particularly helpful to see the title of, of these. Since the name is pretty much either contained within the axes or just apparent by what you're looking at. Right. And so one thing I'm noticing is with the constituency descriptions, there's a big gap down here. Put a picture of a wombat down there, maybe. We could put a picture of a wombat, but I think I want to give this a little bit more room to breathe. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to go do is go to constituency, and you see on this sheet there's also a big gap down here at the bottom. Since it's the same sheet, if we change the gap here, it'll change to the dashboard. So find the gap. We're looking at standard view right now. If we say fit height, it'll oh. it'll fill out that extra space. If we go to dashboard, or you might need to place it back down again, which is fine. We can see that, hey, the gap has been filled. Nice. Probably get rid of this. And so this is one where you can definitely play around for as long as you want to get the dashboard looking exactly as you want it to look. So we're going to change the name of this dashboard. What should we call this? Major donor characteristics, maybe? Yeah.
Okay. So we also want a title to show up in the dashboard. How do we make that happen? Go to dashboard. Show title. Very cool. So I want to format this just a little bit because that's very boring to look at. Instead, what I'll actually do is go over here to say edit title rather than format title. So we're going to make that center justification and make it a bit bigger. And we'll make it, we can make it green if we want that to be consistent. We could pick a different color. Go blue. Okay. Then we have Seahawks. If you have to highlight sheet name. That's true. We probably need a highlight sheet name to make it blue. That is blue. And then make it bigger. Bigger? You said 24. I did say 24. There we go. Yeah. That's bigger. Uh, then maybe move that major donor, major gift threshold That's parameter true. control somewhere where people can see it easier. It's true. Let's put that up by major donor characteristics. Hide that. Okay. That way, right after you see the title, they'll be able to enter in their threshold. All right. So just for fun, change the threshold. What do we want to change that to? I don't know, like 5,000. 5,000. Let's see how the graph changes. All right. Whoa. There's now a bigger gap between male and female. Male and female. Yeah. And age has, has a few more lighter. Yeah. Now it's students. And volunteers are way down here. Yeah, this would be one that median might have been better because the average first major gift amount is huge. So this was so clearly a someone gave a lot of money. So that was skew the average. So that was very clearly that wealthy Newfoundland. Well, they gave a hundred thousand. Student donor. The average here is two fifty. That's so true. Probably someone gave a million or something. I like the age. That's cool. I can bounce over some of those. Uh, that's really cool. See, by mixing it up a little bit too, you have you have some dots, you have some graphs one way, graph another way. Mm -hmm. It creates some interest in your in your dashboard and makes you know it makes it more inviting. The users want to mouse over it and interact with it, and so play with some of those things, try different things out. So, yeah. All right, everyone. So thank you very much for attending our webinar today. We're going to stick around for a few minutes at the end to answer any questions anyone may have. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, one more thing. So if you have Tableau with us, we will be publishing this dashboard and the corresponding worksheets onto your Tableau site. Um, look for that to be there by next Monday. And for everyone else, as a follow-up to the webinar, we'll send the calculated field um, or all of those calculated fields, the formulas for that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you would like, we can also uh, publish this visualization in a method that then can be downloaded and modified right. by you if you want to connect it to your own data. Yep. So we can give you a link to that if you're interested. All right. Uh, all right. Thank you very much, everyone. All right. Thank you.